Hi everyone, welcome to Otaku Saga. I'm DK. I'm Rizzo. And I'm Zero, and today in Anime Reaction, we'll see the third episode of Kobayashi-san Chi no Maid Dragon. If you want to check out our reaction to the third episode of Kobayashi-san Chi no Maid Dragon, hit that link in the description below. And be sure to give us feedback in the comment section, because we love hearing from you. And as always, if you like what you see, subscribe to Otaku Saga, and don't forget to like and share our videos. And, and thanks, thanks for, for watching. watching. So this time on Kobayashi-san Chi no Maid Dragon, uh, they move. Get an upgrade. Because, well, let's face it. I wish um, moving apartments was that easy. Right? <sighs> right. <laughs> right. Like I, uh, I'm, right. I, I'm serious that uh, how easy it was for them made me a little depressed. They had, they they almost had a manager for it. Well, yeah, yeah, pretty much. Well, agent, I guess, real a realtor. But yeah, they just they just picked one and then boom, in like that. Moving rentals here sucks. It that's, sucks ass. I I almost I, want I wanna to say that that's not how it works. Yeah, that's not how any well, of this works. Uh, that may be how it works over there. Yeah. Well, maybe they skip the process for time's sake, but... Probably that, too. Let's just say that it's so, it feels so restrictive here by comparison that I want to spend whatever scant free time I have going around punching landlords on principle. <laughs> yeah, no Pretty shit. Much. And that you should do the same if you live in the U.S. I mean... Yeah, right? Yeah. Anyway, so, yeah, they, uh, basically they decide to move house because Kobayashi wakes up in the middle of the night, he uses the restroom and ends up stepping on Toru's tail. And because then Toru and Kana sleep on the fl on the floor, right next to her bed. Right next to her bed because they they live in a one bedroom apartment. And then she tries to use the restroom, and then uh, Kana bitch slaps her with the door. Yeah, basically the the early part of the episode is showing just how small the uh, yeah well, probably the, like a one k apartment. Uh, no, one LK. yeah, probably one l k. I yeah, they do sizes say. differently over in Japan, so... Well, so, the the way that they do sizes, you're going to get a number, which is the number of bedrooms, and then, you, and then you'll and then you get a, a letter designation behind it, so uh, 1K would just be one one bedroom and a kitchen. Yeah. Uh, one L, LK would be a living room and a kitchen, and then LDK is a living room, room dining room, room kitchen. kitchen. Yeah, they definitely have a living room. Definitely have a living room. It might actually be a one LDK, but yeah, it does seem pretty sizable. They, well, they do have a dining room table there too. Well, there you go. Yeah, uh, I, I wouldn't. I don't know exactly how one that LDK. one is. It's small though, and so they decide to move into a three LDK. Big time. Big time, and uh, they find one that has a community area on top of the on top of the building, which is massive. Which is massive. And uh, perfect for washing your dragon properly. Indeed. It also, it also reminds me of our, our pool area with the fact that nobody use it, uses it until we, we start filming. Right. Naturally. Yeah. Literally for like the two hours we film, two, three hours we film, nobody's out there. Period. Or before. Or before. Think you mean. Yeah. Yeah. Well, actually, I, I do find it slightly amusing that, and, and I do mean this literally today, because, uh, you know, we were waiting on uh, DK to come back from work because of certain issues, but literally today I was sitting on set for like three hours before we started filming, and there wasn't a peep out of our neighbors. The moment that we turn on the lights and start filming... Suddenly we got kids playing, we got our neighbors across the way, like, leaving their door open, and they got a freaking party going on. Ugh. Every time. Every damn time. I'm surprised is, it doesn't it doesn't show up on, on the audio more often, to be honest. Which is um, almost exactly what happened with uh, Kobayashi. Yep. Basically, said, oh, Kobayashi actually. wakes up one morning with a hangover, and... The two neighbors on the side and the neighbor over the top of them are all being loud as heck. And, um... I definitely like a Taro's approach to the situation. Kill them? Plunder them? Um. <laughs> <laughs> 
But yeah, so Toru goes around, and so the lady next to them is cooking, cooking loudly. I'm not sure that I would eat that thing that she gave them. Stewed vegetables. And for some reason, it sounds like she's using goddamn power tools. Who uses power tools to boil vegetables? Uh, it could be one of those really, really old steamers. Maybe. And uh, at the same time, um, food processor? A really loud food processor? <laughs> I think you're making excuses for her. I think you're reaching. <laughs> well, uh, well. Well, I know that I mean, our I know that our blender is pretty loud. Our blender is loud, but our food processor is. I say she seemed to like reason. whole little, uh, you know, like chopped up bits of, of veggies, not like a soup yeah. or anything. Anyway, uh, so she's cook cooking loudly. the The other guy loud. next to them is singing death metal. metal. Yeah, very very loudly. No, okay, that, that's, that's definitely more understandable, or at least more plausible. Yeah, and then the guy over the top of them is using power tools to create uh, wood carvings. Now, here's the thing. Pa a big old power drill for something like that? Really? Really? Well, I imagine he's using something more like a Dremel, but Dremels are still pretty loud. But yeah, I mean, I have a Dremel myself. I've used it uh, in our apartment. I've used that. My yeah, you used it too. Yeah, and they're more they're more high pitched. They're, I don't think they're quite that loud either. Yeah, he sounded like he was using a fucking jackhammer. The loud thing that the loud thing that I have is a um, a power sander. Hmm. Yeah, the belt. The belt sander. Oh my god, is that thing loud? Yeah, incredibly loud. Extremely. Like you have to use earplugs when you're using it, otherwise you risk loss of hearing. Yes. Loud. Yeah. And we may or may not have run that inside the apartment once or twice. What? Huh? <laughs> Lesson learned. Where where wear earphones? Ear, wear earplugs. Wear earplugs. Wear earplugs when you work with power tools. Which is good. Good practice. Or anything louder. <laughs> and safety goggles too. I have to put that in there. Uh yeah. So yeah, basically, Toru goes around, and tells him to you know, knock it off or whatever. Please keep the noise. And then down. later she comes back to the apartment and she sees all the all the neighbors arguing amongst each other. And uh, basically they're arguing about people, you know, which one of them's making the worst sound or whatever. So Tara does what any reasonable person would do and uh, plots to kill them all. Shing, shing. Fortunately for them, Kobayashi comes out and puts her two cents in and basically says... How about we, you know, get together and figure out what everybody's schedules are like and figure out what times we can be loud. <laughs> ah, the voice of reason. And if any of uh, and if uh, our schedules don't match up, then I can always use earplugs. The real MVP. She's such a good neighbor. I know, right? I wish we had that. Uh, I wish we had Kobashi's Hunting Company as neighbors. We actually had one that attempted to go around t telling people to shut the fuck up. But nicely. Yeah, but nicely. And the nice little lady was shut down or turned away. Yep. I myself have been shut down or turned away when I go tell people. Well, I, I've had our neighbors literally tell us, oh, it's, it's not my problem. Or it's okay. No, or, yeah, no it's, it's not okay. okay. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here, you ignorant shit. Right. <laughs> well, that's why uh, we don't really care, and that's why we try to be boisterous as much as we can. Indeed, that's why we don't mind filming in our living room and being loud, even though it's actually getting kind of late. Okay, it's not really that late. Yeah. It's just dark outside. But we have, we've done I some have filming absolutely like late no, at night. Yeah, I have absolutely no problem filming at 1 in the morning and being just as loud as I am when we film at 1 in the afternoon. Or sometimes we take time off because and just they watch fucking videos. deserve it. Yeah, at like 1 or 2 in the morning and we're just guffawing and just laughing our asses off. Because fuck them, <laughs> honestly. Because uh, even if they do complain, they don't have a leg to stand on. Right. Um, we'll take the bat to them. I mean... <laughs> 
<laughs> another thing that we another thing that we saw is um, Toru clean uh, Kobayashi is back. Oh yeah, in full maid outfit. In full maid outfit in the bath, which I thought was weird. And then she discusses uh, cleaning, dragon cleaning, dragon cleaning, grooming. Yep. And uh, in return for cleaning Kobayashi's back, Kobayashi watched, washed her back. Except while... in full dragon form on the roof. Which I gotta say, I like. Halfway between adorable and disturbing. Right. Mm. It's like I'm washing a car <laughs> so, or an airliner. Yeah. Oh, we also get tre- treated to a little funny, uh, funny little skit where. Kobayashi's having a really bad day at work, and then she, so she goes home, she has a really bad commute, and then realizes that she went back she, to her old place. She <laughs> auto-routed to her house. I have done that before. So relatable. Like, when, I, when I've moved and it's in the same city. Especially if it's like, especially, that, that, that first 30 days. Yeah. It, ha- it may happen once or twice. Yeah. So, I have definitely done that before. Um... Then we move on to a party. Yeah, basically they decided to throw a housewarming party. So uh, it was like Kobayashi and um, her uh, otaku friend from work don't have to go to a company party, which is totally relatable. Totally relatable. Oh, yeah. Who the I, hell wants to go to a... I make any and all excuses uh, not to go to company parties. Fire party. Even though those, do, uh, those parties can be pretty lit. Yeah, but I think I, I I personally would prefer to do it with like friends rather than coworkers. Yeah, mm. well, it it really depends on the style of party. Yeah. If it's a company driven party, no thanks. Well, it is a little different in Japan. It is a little different in uh, Japan, but work, coworkers tend to like let their guard down more uh, at corporate drinking parties. That's why they do it so bloody often. But also the fact so. that it is a flower viewing party and uh, the only time anybody's actually viewing flowers there is when they're draining their beers or when they're passed out <laughs> on their back. Yeah. But I can see why they wouldn't want to go, especially if they're not really great friends with the rest of their coworkers. Which say, yeah, them I'm, both being otaku or is probably pretty likely. Yeah, Kobayashi's pretty introverted type anyhow. And so yeah. is her co-worker, so it makes sense. Anyway, so they decide to do a housewarming party. Uh, of course, Kobayashi invites her co-worker. Whom Toru still doesn't approve of, so Toru invites a few of her dragon uh, friends over. Makoto? Yeah, Makoto Takia. So uh, Toru decides she's going to invite Fafnir and Quetzalcoatl. The homicidal one, whose solution to everything is murder. And, uh... The one that got kicked out kicked out of being a goddess because she drank cursed beer. The, the goddess of alcohol. Yeah. Anyway. And who's fucking stacked. Yeah. So I like when, uh, I like when Fafnir shows up and he's in full dragon form. <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> and then Makoto and uh, Kobayashi are just white as sheets, like... What was that? Hang on, let, 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 me, let, let me let me fix this. <laughs> you need to go into that form that we discussed. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Freaking fog like a Guns N' Roses concert. Right. Um, and then when uh, Quetzalcoatl shows up, she, um, how do I want to put it? Kobayashi's A cup angst definitely shows up. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing as uh, Quetzalcoatl's boobs are bigger than her head, which is pretty impressive in an anime that doesn't even use like realistic uh, proportions. Yeah. So the heads are bigger than they normal. Are, they are huge. I, I don't want to say it, but uh, fuck it. The cow orders! They're hooch. Yeah. But yeah, so uh, the party gets off to a pretty good start. Um, Fafnir and Makoto are playing totally not dead uh, Totally totally not not Dark Dark Souls. 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 (laughs) Dead Souls. Dead Souls. Dead Souls. Souls. That's probably the blind name. And then you die. No, 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 no. Since it's the blind name game, you have to use the blind name song. And then you're deceased. It just doesn't roll off the tongue. Yeah. 
But yeah, so Makoto basically starts teaching Fafnir how to play. And, and Fafnir he actually hooked. likes it. Yeah. And Fafnir, uh, being uh, who he is, uh, decides to make his character die intentionally just to see them die. I'm not sure if he was actually doing it intentionally or not. Yeah, he was. It seems like that's the way. He's a dragon. He enjoys treasure. But he hates humans. Yeah, he but hates he humans. Needs treasure. But yeah, like, like mm-hmm. when uh, Makoto was trying to tell him, you know, hey, ignore these treasure chests because they're, they're all they're all mimics. Uh, Fafnir wasn't doing it because he he's a dragon and he likes treasure. Mm-hmm. So even if there's the possibility that only one of those chests is not a mimic, he'll, he must he'll take for the damage it. from the mimic. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you die. But yeah, then uh, then. Quetzalcoatl and Kobayashi decide to drink. Oh boy. And Kobayashi gets completely fucking wasted. And goes into full uh, maid otaku mode. Along with Makoto. Along with Makoto. But did, did Kobayashi honestly think she can outdrink the goddess of alcohol? Probably. <laughs> Probably. Well, she uh, tried. I know I couldn't. And then she ends up stripping Toru, Toru and Quetzalcoatl, and possibly so putting them in maid outfits. I'm not sure if she has a maid outfit big enough for Fafn- Quetzalcoatl. Fafnir Dono, we must have hurt our eyes. Hey, hey, I can't see anything. <laughs> hey, this, this is really difficult. Wall, wall, wall. <laughs> um, yeah. So this is another funny episode. A lot of charming little scenes, really. Uh, not like the outrageous comedy of like the seesaw scene from last week, but uh, nice, uh, amusing little anecdotes this week. Pretty much, yeah. It's a very nice little charming series. Oh, yeah. So. And, uh, and also uh, Toro being washed on the roof. <laughs> Just, yeah. Hey. Mm-hmm. But yeah. So, let us know what you thought of anime, what you thought of our reaction in the comment section below. Yep, thumbs up if you like it, thumbs down if you don't. But that's going to do it for this episode of Anime Reaction. As always, I'm DK. I'm Zero. And I'm Rizzo. See, See you, you next time. time. And go ahead and click on my face to go to our most recent Otaku Saga Talks. Click on my face to go to Otaku Saga Gaming, our gaming channel. And click on the white face to subscribe to Otaku Saga. And check out our new and improved Patreon page.